This is the most important election in the history of our country. Joe Biden devoted his career to offshoring Michigan's jobs, outsourcing <laughs> out I we shouldn't be smiling about it. But we've changed it around, outsourcing Michigan's factories, throwing open your borders, dragging us into endless foreign wars, and surrendering our children's future to China and other faraway lands. Biden supported every disastrous globalist sellout for over a half a century, including NAFTA, China, and TPP. You know that. Joe Biden surrendered your jobs to China, and now he wants to surrender our country to the violent left-wing mob, and you're seeing that every night. If Biden wins, China wins. If Biden wins, the mob wins. If Biden wins, the rioters, anarchists, arsonists, and flag burners win. But I wouldn't worry about it because he's not winning. I don't think he's winning. You know, this is not the crowd of a person who comes in second place. You do know that. The same thing happened four years ago. It was election eve, but by the time I got here, it was late. Some of you are in that audience at 1 o'clock in the morning, now election day. We had 32,000 people show up. And the reason I went is that I heard that crooked Hillary Clinton Bill Clinton and Barack Hussein Obama were traveling to Michigan because they heard they had problems. They were supposed to win Michigan, but they did such a lousy job that they had to come and get some votes, and they came, and I heard about it. They said, sir, could you do it? And I hopped in the plane. We landed at 12 o'clock in the evening. I started speaking at 1 o'clock in the morning, now election day. 32,000 people. She had 500 people. I said, why are we going to lose Michigan? And we didn't. And we didn't. First time in a long time. But now we're up in the polls. We just saw polls. We're up in Michigan. I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't know. I don't know if that's good or bad, because in all those polls where we were down last time, we won. So maybe we're better off being down a little bit. Hello, John James. I see you, handsome guy. Uh, John James, get out and vote for John. I'm going to introduce you in a second, John James. What a job you've done. You know, I have to tell you, he took, I saw this group of people that were running, all nice people, three very rich people, and one guy that was John James. And I saw them all, right? I saw them all, and I said, wait, you know, with the wonderful invention of TiVo, one of the greats, you can play it back. I said, who was that? They said, I don't know, sir. I said, play it back. I said, that man is going to be a star. It was John James. And that was in the Republican primary. And after learning about him with his incredible career and helicopter, and he's a great and actually a great flyer, I heard the other day, a great one, a really good one, as opposed to those that aren't so good. But his incredible uh, background and education at West Point and all of the things he did, I said, this guy, and I endorsed him, and he went like a rocket ship. And frankly, if he had a little more support, he would have won the last time, and this time, I hear you're even and maybe even ahead, and we're going to win for John Jay. And he's a great guy, but I'm going to introduce him in a second. I'm running for re-election to keep jobs in Michigan, 
And we have got a lot of, you know, last year before the China plague came in, we have the China plague. Thank you, China, very much. Should have never let that happen. They should have never, ever let it happen. They stopped it from going into China, but they didn't stop it from coming out here and coming into the U.S. and Europe and the rest of the world, 188 countries. But it is what it is, and we're not happy about it, and we're going to remember it. We're going to remember it. But we had in Michigan and in the country the greatest economy in the history of the world. There has never been an economy like that. And now we're building it again, and it's being built fast. And it, by the way, it's turning out to be, John, a Super V. No more V. Now it's turning out to be a Super V. But to put violent criminals behind bars and to ensure the future belongs to America, not to China. Because if we win, America wins. And that's what it's about. If we win, America wins. Not only does Joe Biden want to eliminate your jobs, he wants to eliminate your borders. He's promised to flood your state with refugees, and you know that as well as I do, and you see it all the time, from terrorist hotspots around the world, including Syria, Somalia, and Yemen. Biden's pledged to have a 700 percent increase. He made this deal with Crazy Bernie, a 700 percent increase in the flow of refugees. So he wants to lift it up by 700 percent. This is in their manifesto. He's also pledged to terminate all national security travel bans, overwhelming your state with poorly vetted migrants from jihadist regions. Making matters worse, he would open the floodgates in the middle of a pandemic. And by the way, the wall, it's over 311 miles long right now. Doing very well. Biden is waging war against the American middle class. I think most of you are not middle class. You're upper class. You're the elite. You know the way they talk about the elite? The elite. They're really elite. I see them. They're not elite. You're the elite. You're the elite. The elite has decided. Boy, have we hurt the elite, haven't we? You're the super elite. The left wants to get rid of me so they can come after you. It's very simple. Over the last three and a half years, we've secured America's borders, blocked the entry of foreign terrorists, fixed our disastrous trade deals, and we have fixed our trade deals good. They are good. In fact, Biden was interviewed today on, there they are, CNN. No, he was just interviewed today. He was interviewed by Jake Tapper, who I find to be a nice guy. I don't think he likes me too much, but that's okay. He was interviewed on CNN, and they said, which is better, NAFTA or the USMCA? He said, no, no, the USMCA. And Tapper goes, what? Couldn't believe it. He said, USMCA. He made a mistake. From his perspective, he made a mistake because he doesn't know what's going on. Even though he's right, he doesn't know. They were a little surprised to hear that. They gave him a few chances. Let's uh, ask that question again. But we brought back our manufacturing jobs. We rebuilt the awesome power of the U.S. military. We obliterated. We obliterated the ISIS caliphate and built the greatest economy in the history of the world. And now we are doing it again, bigger and better than ever before. Before the end of the year, we will have a safe and effective vaccine and we will defeat the China virus. I have a feeling, the, by the way, I think the vaccine is going to come very soon. Come very soon. 
And with it or without it, we're rounding the turn. You see what's happening. You see the numbers are plunging. You see how good we're doing relative to other countries and other parts of the world. But the fake news doesn't like saying that. They don't like telling you that. And next year, unless you have somebody that's going to quadruple your taxes, raise your taxes, raise up all of those regulations that we cut, next year will be one of the greatest years in the history of our country. At no time before has there been a clearer choice between two parties, two visions, two philosophies, and two agendas for the future. There's never been a vision like this. You have Sleepy Joe and you have Trump. Sleepy Joe. He's a beauty. He's a beauty. He's a beauty. You know, I watch the Democrat debates, right? And I, I watch them up there, and he was so bad. I said, there's no way he makes it. It's sad, isn't it? The First Lady actually came in, and one time she watched it, and she goes, and she's a nice person, and she meant this really. Me, I view it differently. But she looked, and she watched the debate, and she watched Joe, and she said, darling, it's so sad. This was early on. And this is the guy I'm running against. It's so sad, darling. It's so sad. But we got him. Joe Biden has put forward the most extreme platform. And it's not him. He doesn't know what platform. He doesn't know. It's your radical left people. It's AOC plus three. It's uh, all these people. Bernie. It's Bernie. It's Kamala, the most liberal person in the U.S. Senate. You know, I tell it all the time. She started off her poll numbers at 15, 14, 12, 12. Then she went back up to 12 and a half. Then it was a big plunge right down to the bottom. And then she dropped out. She dropped out. But there's never been anything like this. And no major party has ever had a candidate that's so extreme in his views. And again, he took the manifesto drawn up by Bernie and the super lips, and that's what he's going by, including a massive increase in your taxes and a total assault on your Second Amendment. On November 3rd, Michigan, you better vote for me. I got you so many damn car plants. I'll tell you what, I'll be so angry at you. I got you a lot of plants. Is that right? I mean, have you seen how, what we're doing here? All the plants that have been built are being built. And what about the plants that are being expanded? They don't want to give you credit for that. They're just expanding. I went to Prime Minister Abe of Japan. I say, Prime Minister, you have to start doing something. You know, he's a great guy. He'll be retiring soon. He's a great guy. The Prime Minister of Japan, Abe. I say, Shinzo, Shinzo, you have to do me a favor. You've got to send car plants over here. You know, you're sending all those cars. We stupidly don't charge you tariffs on those cars that pour into our country. I said, Shinzo, you got to give us plants. No, 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 I can't do that. Uh, that is up to the free enterprise system of Japan. I say, Shinzo, you're a powerful man. You can do it. Oh, I can't do it. The next day they announced five car companies are coming to Michigan, right? And you hadn't had a plant built. Now they've been building it for a number of years. But you hadn't had a plant built in like 42 years. You know, they were the old plants. 
And it's been amazing what's happened in Michigan. But honestly, it's been amazing what's happened in Ohio and North Carolina and South Carolina and Florida and New Hampshire and so many other places. Our country is doing great. We had to take a pause to get rid of the China virus. And we got rid of We're getting rid. We're coming around. We're coming around that turn. I'm telling you, you watch next year better than last year. It's going to be better than last year. Michigan will decide whether we will quickly return to record prosperity or whether we'll allow Sleepy Joe to impose $4 trillion in tax hikes, ban American energy, confiscate your guns, shut down the economy and tell your governor to open up your state. You know, it's all Democrat governors, and I think they do it for political reasons, you know, because there'll be less activity. You'd be doing even better if you had a governor that knew what the hell she was doing. You got to open up the state. And also, you have to have a governor because, you know, right now Michigan's lagging. Great football, great coach, great team. We want a governor, John James that's going to let Michigan play Big Ten football this year. You've been seeing a lot of the other schools want to open Big Ten at my suggestion. How about Sleepy Joe? He said, Donald Trump is against football. No, no, no. I'm the one that says open it up. Let's play football. These people practice disinformation like nobody has ever practiced it. They're liars. I'll tell you, they lie. But we have a good chance. You have a very good commissioner, and the commissioner is working hard, and hopefully very soon they'll say you're going to play football. And I hope they're not leaving Michigan out, because it's never the same if they do. But you have Maryland, where they have a problem at, in terms of playing. And the governors have a lot of power over that. They have a lot of power, a lot of say. So let's play Big Ten football, right? They want to shut down auto production, delay the vaccine. They want to destroy your suburbs. Look at what I've done for your suburbs. You know what I've done. You know what I've done. Does anybody want to have somebody from Antifa as a member and as a resident of your suburb? I don't think so too much. Say, darling, who moved in next door? Oh, it's a resident of Antifa. No, thank you. Let's get out of here. Let's get the hell out of here, darling. Let's leave our suburbs. Oh, I wish Trump were president. He wouldn't have allowed that to happen. And that's exactly right. I won't allow it to happen. The suburbs are the American dream. And I will tell you, I have protected your suburbs. You know, I get rid of a regulation that played with your zoning and played with other things where they forced projects into the suburbs of our great country, and I got rid of it. They said, sir, we can amend it and make it less crazy. I said, no, I don't want to amend it. I don't want to do that. I want to get rid of it. Well, sir, why don't we just do a simple amendment? It would be, I said, I want to get rid of it, end it, and we ended it. We ended it. Well, I think the uh, people living in the suburbs, which I know very well, I watched Westchester in New York where they were doing things that should never have been done, and it's not going to happen to our suburbs. They want to erase your borders and indoctrinate your children with poisonous anti-American lies in our schools. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. For the last four years, they've tried everything to stop us. And they are only getting more desperate by the day. Can you imagine if on September 3rd, they say, ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump has been declared the winner. Donald Trump has been declared. At first, they'll go crazy. And then they'll say, OK, it's time now to be reasonable. They will have had it. 
They will have had it. You know, we were coming together as a nation. Very interesting. Before the plague came in from China, we were coming together. It was success. Somebody said, what's going to bring you together? And it was. We were coming together. I was starting to get calls from Democrats that, frankly, we didn't speak much. And I was starting to get calls. And then all of a sudden, we saw the plague pour in, and we saw what was happening, and it really stopped things. But success was getting very, very close to bringing us all together. And then we had to say, let's take a time out. We got to fix this mess. And we did. And now we're coming back strong. But success brings us together. And it was happening. And then we got that terrible situation happened. And we'll never forget it. Biden and his party tried to lock law-abiding Americans into their homes while they encourage rioters and vandals rampaging through all, in all cases, Democrat-run cities. You know, Republican-run cities are doing very well. I hope you know that. And I hope you know, like in Minneapolis, Minneapolis, we were asked to come in. We went in. We took care of that problem in about, what, 30 minutes? Unfortunately, they let almost two weeks go by. And if you look at what we just did in Wisconsin, which was so amazing, Three days, and we went in. And by the way, the U.S. Marshals went in to get the killer, and that was the end of that. They got the killer. They got the killer. You know what I'm talking about. And we were going to go into Seattle the next day. We're all set, all lined up, looking forward to it. We just said, we're doing it. I mean, they actually took over a part of the city, and the mayor said, this is going to be a summer of love, right? Where do these people come from? But we were all set to go in. They heard we were going in. We informed them we were going in, and they sent their police to do it. And we never even had to go in. But we can solve those problems in a matter of literally minutes. Thank you. Don't say that I'll start to cry and that wouldn't be good for my image. We don't want to, you don't want to see me cry. I'll start to cry. You know, one of the fake news broadcasters, uh, because this happened the other day, we had a tremendous crowd like, uh, like this. I mean, we had a tremendous crowd in North Carolina. They started chanting, we love you, we love you, we love you. And you know, it's incredible. They said, with all the years that they've been covering presidential elections, they've never heard that chant, that we love you. No, it's very nice. No, they've never heard it. True. You know, now they'll say, now they'll say, they'll say he misrepresented. 18 years ago, there was a rally held by somebody. And we heard the words from two people that we love you, sir. Now, this is what we're dealing with. And by the way, I look at, there's a lot of people that, look at this. There's, a lot, there's people back there that can't even get in. Thank you, Michigan. Thank you. It's really nice to be with you. As president, I will always support the heroes of law enforcement. I was very honored to receive the endorsement of the Police Officers Association of Michigan. Where are they? Where are they? They're here someplace. Where are they? Thank you, fellas. That's really nice, I'll tell you. That's an honor. I have to be honest. I got it from Florida, Texas, Ohio, North Carolina, South Carolina. But Michigan is Michigan. <laughs> Thank you. I don't think there's any law enforcement officer that is against us. What is our poll number? 99. I know they had 365,000 at one group, and they got a unanimous vote. I said, that's pretty good. How can you go the other way? You people are fantastic, and we love you. Thank you. That's great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.
Biden says he wants to protect black lives, but his radical platform will cut short the lives of thousands of young African-American citizens. Thousands. The murder rate in Democrat-run cities like Chicago, Baltimore, New York, so many others, is higher than in Afghanistan. Yet Biden supports imposing these failed policies nationwide. You will have crime like you've never seen before. You'll have crime like you've never seen. Last week, Joe Biden proudly accepted the endorsement of the pro-criminal Portland district attorney, who has a policy of releasing rioters, criminals, and violent extremists without charge. Biden's plan, and every time I say Biden's plan, it's not his plan, it's the people that tell him what they're going to do, so please understand. I just don't want to say that every time I mention his name. So it should say, the people that control Biden's plan is to appease domestic terrorists. My plan is to arrest them, to lock them up. If Joe Biden is elected, far-left lunatics won't just be running failed Democrat city. They'll be running the Department of Justice, the Department of Homeland Security, and the United States Supreme Court. And we can't let that happen. No city, town, or suburb will be safe. On November 3rd, your vote will save America. Remember, it's the most important election we've ever had. So I'm joined tonight by some great warriors that have really helped me a lot in Washington with the fake impeachment, the impeachment hoax, the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax. Somebody said Russia's coming up again. Adam Schiff said, would like to find out about it. I said, what about China? What about other countries? It's always Russia. Russia, Russia, they're at it again. I want to just thank these guys, because these were real warriors for all of us. They love your state, and they love our country. Congressman Jack Bergman. Great, Great job, Jack. John Moulinar. Thank you, John. Great. Great going, John. He's a tough cookie. And Tim Wahlberg. Tim, thank you. Great job. What great people. And I talked about him a little while before. I could talk about him all night. He's a star. He's going to be a future star. You know, we have a very much different party than we had four years ago. We're now the party of the workers. We're the party of a lot of different things now. But we weren't really considered the party of the workers. Certainly not anymore. Remember this. We're the party of Abraham Lincoln. A lot of people forget that. Honestly. Remember when they used to say, he doesn't act presidential? And I used to say, it's so easy to be presidential. I'd only have about 10 or 15 people here. You'd be bored. But remember, I used to do that, but I'd always say, I can be more presidential than any president in our history, except for the possibility of Abraham Lincoln when he wears his hat. Tough to be. That's tough to be, John James. But seriously, if you want to be well represented, you know, your current senator, I don't even know this guy. I don't even know this guy. Nobody does. They don't know who he is. They don't even know. He comes into the office, I say, who is that guy? I know every senator. Democrat, Republican, I don't know this guy. I know your other senator, I can tell by her hair. She's got interest in it. You know? But that was John's first crack. He learned a lot. And frankly, and I mean this, if he had more support from the Republican Party, he would have won that race. He would have. But this guy, Peters, right? Peters. I say, who's Peters? Nobody knows him. He doesn't do anything. I really mean, look, we're going to end this, but I have to tell you, John James can be so great. He loves this whole, he loves our country. He's been, he's been educated at the highest level. He was always the top at everything he's ever done. And this is what 
He has. And I, I'll be honest with you, uh, John. I think I can tell this story. John and I were thinking about John. I was thinking about John more than myself because I know talent. And I said, you know, John, you can run for a certain House seat, right? And you're guaranteed to win. You can run for another House seat. It'll be a tough race, but you're going to win. Or you can have a tough race against somebody that nobody ever heard of. It's like a habit that they press that particular trigger. But that's a tough race. So you can be an absolute congressman or you can take a shot at this one. He said, sir, I can do more in the Senate than I can do in the House. And that was his decision. Right? Took a lot of guts. So, John, uh, I'm with you. You have my total and complete endorsement. You have everything I can do. Everything I can do, we will do for you. And I really believe you're going to make it. You're, you're running against somebody that is just ridiculous, folks. It's ridiculous. Don't do it. Also with us are some other great candidates and people that are going to do a tremendous job helping our congressman. Paul Young. Where's Paul Young? Paul, thank you. Good luck. I heard you're doing well, Paul. Paul Young. Lisa McLean. Lisa? Great job. It's going well. And Eric Isaki. Thank you, Eric. Good luck. Good luck. We're going to be out here helping you, too. We're going to be out here. I hope John doesn't even need help, but we're going to help John, too. We're going to help all of you, all right? We're going to be doing it. Thank you. Also with you is RNC chairwoman. You know, she was the head of the whole state, and she kept calling me back, back. Sir, one more speech, you're going to win Michigan. Hadn't been won in decades. One more speech, sir, you're going to win Michigan. I said, all right, Ron, I'm coming in one more time, but that's it. I said, that woman is the most aggressive person I've ever met. She said, I'm telling you, sir, one more speech. I said, all right, I'll do it one more time, but that's it. About a day after I got back, I said, I just got back from Michigan. It was wonderful. I get a call from Ronna McDaniel, and she goes, sir, could you come in tomorrow for another speech? Well, whatever happened, she is the one that got me here at midnight on, she is. So when it came time to picking the head of the RNC, you know, as president, you have a couple of things to say about it, right? I said, who's that woman that kept getting me back to Michigan? Boy, oh boy, she'll be great. Ronna McDaniel. And somebody's doing a fantastic job and tells us we're really pretty far ahead, maybe way ahead, you know? They had a poll. I think it was a Gallup poll. They said 62% of the people are lying about their poll. Now, they're only lying having to do with mine. And I don't know if I'm supposed to be insulted by that or not, but we'll take it. But we could have a very big win. And look, uh, no president has done for Michigan what President Trump has done for Michigan. And you're going to remember that. And I'm going to remember Michigan. Michigan GOP Chair Laura Cox. Great. Thank you. Great job. Great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Laura. We spent the last four years reversing the horrible damage Joe Biden inflicted over the last 47 years. 47 years of bad votes. After the last administration nearly killed the U.S. auto industry, I saved the U.S. auto industry. Joe Biden supported the disastrous Trans-Pacific Partnership, which would have been a death sentence for American auto jobs. I withdrew from the TPP my first week in office. That was so easy. That was so easy. You wouldn't have been making cars. You would have been buying cars from foreign lands. We have enough of that. Biden supported the horrendous South Korea deal that would have wiped out U.S. production of the pickup truck, which is the most, the pickup truck is the most profitable thing the auto industry makes. You know why? We have something called the chicken tax. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? The chicken tax. 
It's a tariff of 25 percent, and it keeps other countries out of here. And it expired, and South Korea didn't want to do it, but they did it. We got it right back, and we put it on for a long time. And now you're making — but remember this. Go check it out. The chicken tax. I'll tell you why someday at another meeting why they call it that. Maybe you don't want to know about it. But we're keeping those small trucks, and we're keeping our whole industry good, and we're expanding our autos now, our cars, and we're doing a great job of it. And I want to thank everybody. Doing a great job. And by the way, many other things in Michigan. Biden supported the outrageous fuel economy standards that have hammered the auto industry. And I reversed that rule. I actually reversed it. And it helped millions of families be able to afford a car. The United States lost 500 auto and auto parts factories under the Obama-Biden disaster. Before the virus, my administration added over 200 new auto and auto parts plants. In 2007, how about 200? I didn't know that. 200? 200? I thought it was a little less than that. Wait, I want to see that again. 200. It says 200. Do you believe it? That's a lot. You know, I have a choice between teleprompter and freelance. And I hate to say, the freelance is always a hell of a lot better, but... If you remember, and you remember well, I actually got elected because of freelance. We didn't have teleprompters. There were no teleprompters. But think of that, 200. We're talking about 200 plants. I thought it was a much lower number, and I thought you should put me in office based on a much lower number. At 200, you have no choice. Yesterday, <laughs> Biden was in Michigan. He said, I'd better get out of the basement. This guy's starting to do very well. Lying about his lifetime of cold-hearted globalist betrayals. Biden championed NAFTA, perhaps the worst trade deal in the history of our country. And he continued to embrace and promote NAFTA for decades. And I told you, he just said, it was not as good as the deal I made. I can't believe. Oh, they're giving him hell tonight. They're giving him hell. What did you say that for? Boy, oh boy. Yeah. Hyden. Joe Hyden. Look, you know, this doesn't sound nice. I'll say it. And they'll criticize me for it. You watch. But I have the distinct pleasure of running against the worst presidential candidate in the history of presidential politics. I really believe that. I don't know. Can you imagine if I lost to him? I'd have to say I lost to the worst candidate ever put up. Don't do that to me, Michigan. Biden supported China's entry into the World Trade Organization, which, by the way, was a disaster. China was flatlining for years and years and decades, and it got into this World Trade Organization with all sorts of advantages. Just a terrible, terrible situation took place, and that's when China became a big, powerful economic power. But if you look at the numbers just before the plague, now the numbers are different. We were going up, up, up. We were beating them like a drum. They weren't even close. We were gaining, gaining, gaining. We were number one by far. You know, for years I've heard that in 2019, China was going to surpass us. Well, in 2019, we gained a lot on them. We were doing great. We were doing great. And we'll be doing even better next year. You watch. Yesterday, it was revealed that a fund partly owned by Joe Biden's son, Where's Hunter? See, his first name, I now name, his first name is Where. Where's Hunter? He must be a brilliant guy, because with no experience, he's taking more money from more countries. 
He had no job and then he became rich. But where's Hunter facilitated the sale of a Michigan automotive company to a leading Chinese military defense contractor? Does anyone know that China's military got yet another piece of American manufacturing might? And the Biden family made a lot of money on it. A lot of money. What about Ukraine? He got $183,000 a month, $3 million up front, and he had no experience with energy, working for an energy company, by the way. What's your experience? Hunter, what's your experience with energy? I don't have any, okay? We'll pay you $183,000 a month. And we'll give you an upfront payment, Hunter, of $3 million. Will that be satisfactory? He goes, yes, I'll take it. Would anybody here not take that deal? Anybody, please raise your hand. It's one guy, right? You must be a pretty rich guy. If Biden's elected, China will own America. Washington vultures like Biden and others ripped apart entire towns all across your state. Michigan lost half of all manufacturing jobs after the trade deals that Biden supported. And by the way, I don't know if anybody, does anybody remember, like 12 years ago, long before I thought about running for president, when I enjoyed my life, I had the greatest life. Where would we like to go? Let's go to Monte Carlo this weekend. Let's go. No, I had a great life, but I was honored. I was doing very well. I was honored in Michigan. Does anybody know that? I was given Man of the Year award by somebody. And I came in and I spent like 45 minutes talking about how you've been ripped off, how all your auto companies are leaving and going to Mexico, and by the way, to Canada too. But how they're all leaving and going to Mexico and Canada. I spent the whole time talking about it. I said, at the end, I felt embarrassed. I said, I hope I haven't insulted the state too much. But why do you let this happen? I stopped it. I stopped it. Won't be happening. Won't be happening. It's not going to happen anymore. Biden took a sledgehammer to your state earlier this year. I kept my promise to Michigan workers when we ended the NAFTA nightmare that everybody said was impossible to end, and when we signed that brand-new U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement into law. The USMCA includes powerful wage protections to keep auto manufacturing jobs right here in Michigan. Now they have a tremendous disincentive to leave Michigan, fire all of our workers, Go to Mexico or Canada, make the car or the product, send it in here without tariffs. We end up with closed factories, no job, and no taxes. That's not happening anymore. That's not happening anymore. But you remember how bad it was just before I took office. It was, it was like an avalanche of companies leaving our country. I also took the toughest ever action to stand up to China's rampant theft of Michigan jobs. Biden has vowed to remove these tariffs and allow China to resume its pillaging. Just so you know, China's paying us tens of billions of dollars a month. Before me, China never paid anything. They didn't pay us 10 cents. And you know what I did with some of that money? I gave it to our farmers. I don't know if we have a lot. Do we have farmers here? We are farmers. Raise your hand, farmer. Not bad. Now, I gave $28 billion to our farmers because they were targeted by China. They were targeted. They said, you know, and that's what they did to the past to other presidents. They said, if you do this, we're going to stop doing business with your farmers and you're not going to be able to get any votes and you're going to lose the Midwest and all of that. And I said, you know what? I do whatever you want. Then I went to Sonny Perdue, Secretary of Agriculture, a great guy. I said, Sonny, how much are they being targeted for? Sir, $12 billion the first year, two years, three years ago, and then $16 billion, a total of $28 billion. I said, that's okay. We're putting tariffs on everything they send into our country. 25% was going to raise it to 50%. 
also 10 percent and 12 percent, all different tariffs. We took in billions and billions, and I said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take of that, the 12 and the 16, 28 billion dollars, and we're going to give it to our farmers who were targeted, and our farmers are doing great. That's what we did. You think Joe Biden would do that? He wouldn't have a clue. Hillary wouldn't have had a clue. Crazy Bernie wouldn't have. Nobody would have had a clue on that one. And by the way, we had billions, tens of billions of dollars left over. You know what I did with that? We gave it to the U.S. Treasury, right smack into the heart of the U.S. Treasury. And we're still getting those big tariffs, even though we made a trade deal with China. I said, no, you got to leave the tariffs on. A lot of people didn't know it. Schumer went, well, I don't like the deal. First of all, he didn't like tra tariffs. Then all of a sudden, he loved it. But when I made the deal with China, I left the tariffs on 25 percent and some different amounts. But I left tariffs largely on. And nobody could believe it. They said to Schumer, what do you think of the deal? I don't like it because he got rid of the tariffs. I said, no, we left the tariffs on. This is what it is. No matter how you do it, no matter how good the deal, they'll say it's no good. Because they don't love the country. They don't love the country. Remember that. Joe Biden's agenda is made in China. My agenda is made in the USA. That's a nice plane. Somebody said to me, your plane's just as nice as that. I said, no, it's not. That's Air Force One. That's the nicest. That's the nicest. Always that's the nicest. I also authorized millions of dollars to save Michigan Sulaks and forget, right? Forget all the problems they had. For years and years, they fought over the money to do it. We got $300 million to the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, and we have done a job on the Sulaks. They were rotting. You weren't going to have anything come through the Sulaks. It's all done. That deal is all done. It's all done, right? Thank you. Thank you. Where are my guys there? Good job, right? Even though you're law enforcement, that's a good job, right? <laughs> Two months ago, I also issued a major disaster declaration in response to the catastrophic flooding caused by the failure of the Edenville Dam. Yes. Where are the people from Edenville? Edenville, yeah, good. Now, that was a terrible thing, and they're working very hard right now. We're providing more than $43 million in federal funds to help homeowners, businesses, and communities in central Michigan to recover from that catastrophe. And you know, it's a privately owned dam. I think we're going to have to sue the ass off of the company that has it. I don't know. I don't know why we're doing it. I'll tell you why we're doing it. Our great congressman. Thank you, congressman. Great job. Thank you. Great. He called up. He said, uh, sir, we have to do it. It's a private dam. I said, well, if it's a private dam, don't they have to do it? Say, it will never happen, right? But we'll end up getting some of that back, I think. Great, great representative you have. I want to tell you, he fought like hell. Thank you. Perhaps in no area. Have our opponents more thoroughly betrayed working families of all backgrounds than on the subject of immigration? Under my administration, we've achieved the most secure border in American history. We've ended catch and release, stopped asylum fraud, and we've deported over 20,000 vicious gang members and over a half a million criminal, illegal aliens. As I said, we've already built over 310 miles of border wall. It's all going to be finished very quickly. We're averaging about 10 new, brand new, beautiful miles every single week. 
It'll be finished very shortly. We've invested $2.5 trillion in the U.S. military, all made in the USA, by the way, all made in the USA. You know, with the fake news today, I said, and we have systems and missiles and rockets and military and tech. We have systems that you've never even seen before. President Xi has nothing like it. Putin has nothing like it. Nobody has anything like what we have. And they said, is he giving away military information? No. I'm saying we have the greatest weapons in the world. That's what I'm saying. They said he may be giving away classified information. You don't have to worry about it. These people are sick. Never speak well about our technology because you're giving away classified information. Now, I just want to let people know we have the greatest systems, the greatest equipment, and the greatest people anywhere in the world. There's nobody like the U.S. military. Most powerful. We have the most powerful military in the world. And when I took it over, it was depleted. It was in trouble. It was exhausted from these ridiculous, endless wars that last 19 and 20 years. And, you know, those soldiers are starting to come home very big. You know that, right? They're all coming home. They're all coming home. And we launched the first new branch of the U.S. Armed Forces in nearly 75 years since the Air Force. We launched the Space Force. Very, very important. We passed the Mission Act. We call it VA Choice and VA Accountability. We hold people accountable if they don't treat our vets good. You're fired. Get out. You're fired. We did more in 47 months than Sleepy Joe Biden did in 47 years. That's true. We did more. That, that sort of has a nice ring to it, right? Think of it. We did more, and it's true. Just take a, take a look. Space Force by itself, that would be a major achievement. And with us, we did so many things, so many things. But we did more in 47 months than he did in 47 years. It's true. It's true. And a lot of what I did is destroy some of the horrible things that they did, including regulations all over the place. I withdrew from the last administration's disastrous Iran nuclear deal. We paid $150 billion, $1.8 billion in cash. We ought to speak to law enforcement about that. How do we send $1.8 billion in ca cash? In cash! You guys ought to take a look at that, please. I kept my promise, recognized the true capital of Israel, and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. Every president said they were going to do that. None of them did it. For decades and decades, they all said. And I tell the story. You know, it was uh, a hard thing to get done. It was easy to talk about in the campaign. We're going to open up the embassy in Jerusalem. We're going to make it. It becomes automatically the capital of Israel. That's Everybody said it for very, very many decades, for decades. Many presidents. But I realize now why it wasn't their fault, because as soon as I got in, I was lobbied by everybody. Please don't do it. Don't do it. Don't make the capital of Israel, Jerusalem. Don't move your embassy. Okay, so it went on and on. And then I said, let's do it anyway. So, and the word got out. The word got out that I was going to do it. And I was called by every king and every queen and every prime minister and every everybody was calling me, please, sir, don't do it, please. So I did what we sometimes will do in business. I told them when a king calls, when somebody calls, an emir, when somebody calls, tell them I'll call him back in a few days. I'm sorry, sir, he won't be able to speak right now. He'll call you back on Wednesday. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it. On Tuesday, I announced that I'm doing it.
And then I got on the phone with 18 different companies. I go, hey, how you doing? You called. I'm just returning your call. Oh, it's too late, sir. We called about Israel. It's too late. I said, yeah, I'm sorry. I wish you got to me a little bit sooner. I recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights, and we achieved the first breakthrough in Middle East peace in decades. And by the way, on Wednesday, I believe of next week, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and as you know, the country, very powerful, very respected country with a great leader, UAE, is coming to the White House. And we're going to sign an agreement that hasn't been signed in many decades. It's peace and it's recognition of Israel and all of the things nobody thought it could be done. And you know, it's an amazing thing. I don't say this out of ego, but I was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. And, now, I, I have to tell you, that's sort of a big thing. And the networks and most of the news didn't cover it. Could you imagine? When Obama came to office, I said, we're going to give him the Nobel Peace Prize. He actually said, what did I do? I didn't do anything. He didn't do anything for eight years, frankly. But he said, what did I do? They gave it to him in a matter of weeks, right? Weeks. And with us, we've done so much. With, we have done so much on so many different fronts. Remember North Korea? Remember they were going to be at war with North Korea? Where's the war? Where's the war? Where's the war? And we have a good relationship with Kim Jong-un. Who knows what happens? All I know is we're not in war, and that's okay. They said, but he gave away so much. I said, I gave away nothing. No, he gave away so much. When I said, what did I give away? You know what they said? Uh, we don't know. I said, here's what I gave away. I gave away nothing. They said, oh, but you agreed to meet. Oh, I see. I agreed to meet. So now they're saying, I agreed to meet. It was such a big deal. Instead of being in a war, I think agreeing to meet is okay, right? And we did. He's a different kind of a guy, and he's a smart guy, smart, very smart guy. We get along. You know, getting along with foreign powers is not a bad thing. We're trying to teach that to the media and these idiots that ran our government for so many years. These fools. These fools. You know, you got nuclear weapons, you got big armies, big navies. He gets along with Putin. That's a terrible thing. No, it's a good thing. If I get along, that's good. He likes me. I like him. Not so bad. He gets along with Kim Jong-un. That's a terrible thing. No, it's a good thing. I'm trying to convince him. It's okay. It's okay not to go to war. It's really okay. He gets along with President Xi. He gets along with Prime Minister Abe. He gets along with a lot of people. And it's okay. That's a good thing. It's, it's really hard. These stupid people that have been running this operation for 30, 40 years, and they come out against me, and all they did is stick us in these endless wars. We're fighting for sand and blood. Sand and blood. Syria, what do you get out of it? You get sand, you get blood, you get injuries, you get death. These people don't know what the hell they're doing, and it's one of the reasons I got elected, I can tell you that. We don't like his foreign policy. And this is said by one of the guys that got us into the war in Iraq, got us into the Middle East. So it's, uh, we're doing a great job. We're doing a great job for you. We're doing a great job for Michigan. Just to finish in the Middle East, we killed the founder and leader of ISIS, al-Baghdadi. And by the way, we're pulling back and we're doing everything so beautifully. If we do get into war, we win the war. We don't fight for nothing. We fought for nothing. We don't ever want to have war. But if there is a war, nobody's going to even come close to being able to beat us. And we won't be depleted from fighting in all these ridiculous locations all over the globe. 
You people know that a lot better than the idiots in Washington that have represented us for 35 years. We took out the world's number one terrorist and the mass murder of American troops. Qasim Soleimani is dead. We kept America out of new wars and we're bringing our troops back home and they're coming home very rapidly. You see that? Sleepy Joe Biden voted for the Iraq war. He supported the defense sequester that gutted our military, destroyed our military, set us back so many years. I got rid of it immediately. He opposed the mission to take out Osama bin Laden. He was against it. Everything he did, he was wrong on, as said by Gates, you know, Secretary of Defense, Secretary of everything. He was sort of like he had more jobs than any human being I've ever seen. But he said everything, everything that Biden was for was wrong. He opposed killing Soleimani. He oversaw the rise of ISIS. He was unable to do anything with ISIS. You know, I had the leader of a very important country in my office recently, and he said, and I'll probably refer to the press, they'll say, who is it? He said, thank you, sir. You were the one that got rid of ISIS. I said, I was the one? You're actually giving me credit? He said, absolutely. When you took over, ISIS in Iraq and ISIS in Syria was all over. It was growing at a level like we've never seen. You came in and you absolutely wiped it out. Happens to be... The man that said that happens to be the leader of Iraq. And he was very nice. He was very generous in his statements. He came to the White House two weeks ago. And we cheered as we looked at all of the success that we've had. But he really oversaw the rise of China as a positive development. Remember, he said, no, it's a positive development for America and for the world. He's been in Washington for 47 years. Now he's all of a sudden going to change. He's going to change. He's not going to change. Don't forget, he was in Washington in his prime time, which was never considered great. And now it's no longer prime time. When I banned travel from China, Biden called it hysterical and xenophobic. If we had listened to Joe, hundreds of thousands more Americans would have died from the China plague. Biden was willing to sacrifice American lives on the altar of open borders. And now Joe Biden is once again hurting innocent people with his dangerous anti-vaccine conspiracy theories, putting millions of lives around the world at risk. And the only reason he's doing that is he knows we're right next to having a vaccine. So he wants to belittle the vaccine because he doesn't want us to get credit. But again, it's not him, it's the people surrounding him. When the virus arrived, we launched the largest national mobilization since World War II. Recently, I visited the workers at Ford's historic Ravenswell plant, who converted their factory to produce tens of thousands of ventilators after we invoked the Defense Production Act. And they've done a fantastic job. Not a single American who has needed a ventilator has been denied a ventilator any time in our whole country. They needed a ventilator. We had nothing. We were left bare cupboards. I always say the cupboards were bare. We're delivering life-saving therapies and have achieved among the lowest case fatality rates anywhere of any country in the world. Europe's excess mortality rate is 24 percent higher than the rate in the United States. You don't hear that from the fake news. America will prevail over the China virus. As Franklin Delano Roosevelt said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. That's it. We're doing very well. As the British government advised the British people in the face of World War II, keep calm and carry on. That's what I did. This whack job that wrote the book, he said, 
Well, Trump knew a little bit. They wanted me to come out and scream, people are dying, we're dying. No, no. We did it just the right way. We have to be calm. We don't want to be crazed lunatics. We have to leave. When Hitler was bombing, I don't know if you know this, when Hitler was bombing London, Churchill, great leader, would oftentimes go to a roof in London and speak. And he always spoke with calmness. He said, we have to show calmness. No, we did it the right way, and we've done a job like nobody. All of those great generals, all of those great admirals, our great Vice President Mike Pence, they did a fantastic job. Our doctors, and they don't get any credit because they want to discredit us as much as possible because they wanted to carry over to November 3rd, but we've done a fantastic job. I think we've probably done the best job of any country, certainly of any major country anywhere in the world on the pandemic. Through our historic relief programs, we've saved more than 1.6 million Michigan jobs and over 120,000, 128,000 Michigan businesses. Michigan has already gained and regained more than half of the jobs that it lost. And if your state was ever allowed to safely reopen by your governor, who doesn't have a clue, she's like Joe. You would have regained far more than that. Open up your state, Madam Governor. Open up your state. It's done. Just like crazy Nancy Pelosi, your governor is a liberal hypocrite who lives by a different set of rules. Her husband was caught trying to put his boat in the water on Memorial Day weekend while she was ordering the people of Michigan to stay in their homes and forcing businesses into bankruptcy left and right. The Biden agenda would collapse our economy and destroy this great opportunity that we're having right now. He would impose job-destroying regulations that would demolish the auto industry. You know, on regulations, it took, in many cases, 18, 19, 20 years to get a roadway or a highway approved. We have it down now to two years. We're trying to get it down to one year, and it may get disapproved for environmental or safety reasons, but we're going to know about it very fast. No more 20-year approvals or disapprovals. He wants to force you to provide free government health care to illegal aliens. He will destroy your Social Security. He will destroy your protections for pre-existing conditions, and we will save Social Security. Remember they said last time, oh, Trump is going to destroy Social Security. Well, it's now four years. We haven't touched it. We protected it, and that's going to remain that way. Biden opposes school choice and has stated that if he's elected, charter schools so important are gone. In a second term, I will provide school choice to every parent in America. A vote for Republicans is a vote for safe communities, great jobs, and a limitless future for all Americans. Instead of letting Washington change us, despite all that we have been through, we are changing Washington. And in conclusion, although I hate to, I really do, I hate to conclude. I hate to conclude because I love being with you. I do. I do. So in conclusion, over the next four years, we will make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world, and we will end our reliance on China once and for all. We've been doing it anyway. We will make our medical supplies right here in the United States and right here in Michigan. 
We will enact fair trade deals that create American jobs and grow American wages. We will rapidly return to full employment, soaring incomes, and record prosperity, and that's already happening. We will hire more police, increase penalties for assaults on law enforcement, surge federal prosecutors into high-crime communities, and we will ban sanctuary cities. We will appoint prosecutors, judges, and justices who believe in enforcing the law, not their own political agenda. We will ensure equal justice for citizens of every race, color, religion, and creed. We will defend the dignity of work and the sanctity of life. We will uphold religious liberty, free speech, and the right to keep and bear arms. And you're lucky I'm here because your Second Amendment would be gone if I wasn't. And they didn't touch it. We will strike down terrorists who threaten our citizens, and we will keep out people, keep them out of these horrible, horrible situations where they hurt our country, they hurt the people of our country, and we're also going to be staying out of the endless, ridiculous foreign wars in countries that you've never even heard of. We will build the most powerful missile and cyber defense. We've already got it, pretty much. And we will maintain peace through strength. We will end surprise medical billing, require the biggest thing that nobody even knows about, and it's all signed, and it goes into effect on January 1st. And you better make sure I win. Can you imagine? This is going to be the biggest thing, and nobody understands what it is. You'll figure it out. Price transparency. Did they fight me on that one? January 1st. And further reduce health insurance premiums and the cost of prescription drugs at a level like you've never seen before. I've already signed it. Favored nations, the drug companies are not happy, I will tell you. Just all you have to do is take a look at all the ads they're running against me favored nations where we pay whatever the lowest is in the world, we pay that number. We will protect Medicare and Social Security, and we will always protect our patients. We will always protect our people. We will protect your pre-existing conditions, as I said. America will land the first woman on the moon, and the United States will be the first nation to land an astronaut on Mars. We will restore patriotic education. You know what I mean by that. And we will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag. And we will live by the timeless words of our national motto, In God We Trust. And I don't know if you saw it, but during the Democrat National Convention in caucus, they took twice. I thought I was sort of, maybe they made a mistake. You saw that. They took the word God out of the Pledge of Allegiance twice. And then they said, oh, well, that, well, maybe it was a mistake. It wasn't a mistake. That's where they're coming from. Don't be foolish. That's where they're coming from. And there's nothing that sleepy Joe Biden can do about it. For years, you had a president who apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America and standing up for Michigan. So get your friends, get your family, get your neighbors and your co-workers and get out and vote, so important.
from Grand Rapids to Saginaw, from Kalamazoo to Mackinac, and from Flint to right here in Freeland. We stand on the shoulders of generations of Michigan patriots who gave their blood, sweat, and tears for this beloved nation. This is the state where Henry Ford invented the assembly line. It's the place where General Motors, Chrysler, and Kellogg revolutionized entire industries. Mission, well, you know this one, right? Michigan gave us Motown, right? That's right. That's right, Motown. We love Motown. Michigan gave us Motown, gave us Motown, gave us the Mustang and the unrivaled might of the American Midwest. This is the state where tough, strong, and determined workers made America into the greatest and most powerful nation in the history of the world. And we are making it greater and greater every single day. Proud citizens like you help build this country. And together, we will be taking back our country. We'll be taking it back from people that don't love our country and that take back is almost complete. We have to win on November 3rd. We're returning power to you, the American people. With your help, your devotion, and your drive, we are going to keep on working. We are going to keep on fighting. And we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. We are going to keep on winning. Vote for John James. John James. We need John James. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together with the incredible people of Michigan, we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Michigan. We love you, Michigan. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us here at Golden State Times. Thank you for, so much for choosing us as your stream of choice. I, I hope that you guys enjoyed the president's speech in Freeland, Michigan, the great state of Michigan. President Trump fired up for this, uh, this rally. And don't forget, folks, there's a bunch of other rallies coming up. So make sure you guys subscribe and you click that notification bell. Hopefully your YouTube notifies you for the next rally. Thank you so much, folks, once again, for choosing Golden State Times as your stream of choice. And we hope to see you guys here tomorrow bright and early for more full coverage of President Trump at the White House and uh, speeches and all that stuff. So thank you so much once again to all the patriots who joined us. And uh, let us know what you guys think in the comments section below. Give us your comments, your suggestions, everything in the comment section below. And if you're new to the channel, we encourage you to subscribe and click that bell. If you subscribed already, welcome to the family and welcome to the underground when it comes to news. Because we are not the mainstream media. We do not want to be the mainstream media. And we are not friends with the mainstream media. Us and the mainstream media are not on the same side. As you guys can see, the mainstream media continues to push fake narratives about President Trump, continues to push conspiracy theories about President Trump, 100% fake stuff. So we 
and the mainstream media are not on the same side because we want to show you exactly what is going on at the White House without any interruption or any BS. So if that's the type of coverage you're looking for, if that's the type of news network you're looking for, make sure you subscribe and you click that bell. We welcome you to the family. Also, make sure you follow us on Twitter at Gold State Times. Thank you so much, folks. Have a good night. Share this video on social media. Click the thumbs up button and say hello in the chat or in the comment section below. Thank you so much, folks, and we'll see you soon. Peace.